Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey, and we're over here. Oh, I forgot to introduce my lovely assistant. Johnny? Johnny! From Queen's College! From Queen's College, really? Okay, yeah, yeah. sweet. All right, it's Ramsey Dewey and Johnny over here at the Extreme Fight Lab, and we're gonna answer a question from, how do you say this screen name? Five E A U X, is that French? I don't know, maybe it's a French name, but he says this. He just came, he saw a video I made on the uh, Imanari rule. If you don't know what that is, it looks something like this. You shoot in here, you roll around, you sweep the guy down, and then you heel hook him, and I'm doing all this with a cell phone. So my hand and a little lapel mic that just came off, so let me put it back on right there. Okay, we'll probably do some editing on this one. So uh, a friend, he saw this video about an Imanari roll, and he wants to know, uh, as a white belt, he's not, he doesn't feel like he's at the heel hook level. He says, that said, how do defenders know when to tap versus when to fight or roll out of a heel hook? The concept of destroying a friend's knee or having my own knee ripped apart scares me, and it should, because heel hooks are no laughing matter. So let's come down to the nitty gritties of the heel hook. Johnny, let me uh, a foot right here. Okay, so we can do a heel hook inside, outside, etc. That's, that's not really the point of the video. But I've got his toes under my arm. Maybe I'll put this down a little lower. There we go. Now I'm not going to bite it while I talk. So I have a little bend in the knee. I've got the toes under here. I've got this. Now, Johnny's in a vulnerable position. He's in a position where I could tear up his knee, tear up the ACL and all the other ligaments by rotating this way a little bit. Now, Johnny, I'm going to put a tiny bit of pressure, just a tiny bit of pressure on, and I want you to tell me if it hurts. Does that hurt? No. no. Do you, yeah, do you, you're flexible, right? So do you feel pressure in the knee or bending at all in the knee? Okay, no, not pain, but pressure, right? So you probably feel a little bit of torsion right here, but not pain. Okay, so a little twisting, but it's not painful, right? Yeah, and this is the reason, this is the reason why People say heel hooks are so dangerous, specifically because they don't hurt right away. They don't give you this pain signal, as opposed to something like a straight ankle lock. If I've got a straight ankle lock in here and I'm biting down really hard, you know, this gives him the signal to tap. It starts to hurt, and he knows how to tap because, you know, it hurts, right? It gives him a pain response. But this one, whether it's an outside or an inside heel hook, I start to apply pressure. There's no pain. He feels okay. And if he's not familiar with the danger of this, of this and how far he can go, he might not tap, and then all of these are going to tear and whatnot. So as a white belt, a lot of people are really afraid to teach white belts any leg locks at all because they think they're going to kill each other and destroy their knees. And some of them probably would. So with some people, that, that might be wise. But I'm of the opinion that it's important to learn leg locks early and often, specifically so you know why they're dangerous, how they're dangerous, and when you need to tap. So especially when you're beginning. I play a game of catch and release all the time. So if I get in a position to get a heel hook, I'll put my hands in that position. I will put no pressure on it, and I will let go. I don't care if he acknowledges it or not. I know I'm in a position where I can finish the heel hook there, and then I'll try for something else, like maybe a straight ankle lock, where it will give him that pain response, right? Or maybe I'll try for a guard pass or whatever. Right. So, again, I would recommend play a game of catch and release. If I catch him in the heel hook position, again, hold it for a second till I know, okay, I could, I could tear apart his knee, but I'm not going to, and release, try for something else. You're probably thinking, well, yeah, but how do I know when to fight out of it? Because that was your question, right? When in doubt, tap out. Can't stress that enough, especially as a white belt. Now, as you train more, you're going to develop more sensitivity to your own body, a greater sense of proprioception. That's the ability to feel and sense your own body, how it moves, etc. A greater sense of kinesthetic bodily intelligence. And you're going to start understanding your limits a little bit more. But understand this, everybody has very limited mobility in their knees this way. Not this way, this is normal, right? But this way, not so much. It kind of jostles a little bit, maybe a few centimeters of give, right? So, Johnny, do you know a heel hook? 
No. Okay. <laughs> no. All right. Now, you asked about rolling out of a heel hook, and let's, let's address this. Because some people don't know the difference between a heel hook and a straight ankle lock. If I'm applying pressure this way, I'm pulling up, and I'm, I'm twisting his knee this way. Now, if I don't have my legs locked, I don't have my legs tied up, and I start applying pressure this way, he can take the pressure off by rolling with it. If I do have my legs all tied up here, right? Maybe I've got like, okay, now, now it's very tight. Now it's going to be much harder for him to roll out. So yeah, he can try and I've got his legs tied up here and I can make it even worse by knee reaping him and doing all this IBJJF illegal stuff like triangling here and putting a bunch of pressure there. And at that point, yeah, if you're stuck in one of those, forget about rolling out. But like I said, some people don't know the difference between a straight ankle lock and a heel hook and they just assume anything Anytime somebody has a hold of your foot, let me borrow a foot, they can roll out of it. So let's do a straight ankle lock here. So I'm attacking the, the Achilles there. Now I'm applying upward pressure, okay? And if Johnny rolls out, he, especially if I've stabilized his leg here, now it's going to start torquing his knee. Now he's essentially going to start heel hooking himself. It's not a heel hook, it's a straight ankle lock. But if I have this stabilized, now he's going to start putting pressure on that. Worst case scenario, Best case scenario, here roll. He's gonna go belly down and make that straight ankle lock much easier for me to finish. So don't try to roll out of a straight ankle lock at all, ever. Heel hook, that is something you can sort of roll out of, but I'm gonna tell you something that's probably better. Let's say I'm in a position where, you know, my toes are under, um, yeah, go and hide, hide your feet right there. And instead of locking up the, the, the leg right away, yeah, get this. Now gable grip. So that, that's a heel hook position. Johnny's in a position where he could destroy my, my heel just by lifting this and squeezing these, right? You feel that? So putting, yeah, the heel is the lever that lifts this up. And I would tap out right there. It's not a lot of pressure. I mean, he could probably go farther and I'd be okay. But I'm feeling that pressure. Here, do that again. A little bit more. Again, I would tap out there. Now, like I said, I could probably fight through this, and if there was money on the line or something, if it's an MMA fight, I might flex my foot and grab his hands and you know, get my other foot in here and start trying to stabilize this to get this out. I mean, that's, in my experience, much higher percentage than trying to roll out of it, because if you roll out, eh, especially if he's got his legs pinched in really tight, you might not, you might not be as, as successful as you hoped you would. If his legs are loose and you roll out, yeah, especially if it's like no gi and, or MMA or something. Sometimes you can make that work just from lack of friction. But yeah, once again, I can't stress this enough as a white belt, when in doubt, tap out. Um, maybe try this exercise. I, I do this with uh, some of my students sometimes, especially when I'm teaching like an MMA class. I'll, uh, we'll just take turns getting in position to finish the, uh, the heel hook, right? So I'll do one outside, one inside, and forget about the legs. We don't need to do anything with the legs. And then the other leg, one inside, one outside, just to get familiar with the, with the foot position. And then Johnny can do the same thing. He can do one outside, so under the, under the armpit there. All right. Yeah. And then one inside, toes under the armpit. Yeah, that's it. And then other foot. Let's do one outside toes under the armpit. Uh-huh. And right there. So again, we're, we're not putting the pressure on. We're just getting used to getting into position and making it tight right here. And so I do four, he does four, I, does, I do four, he does four. And what this does, it gets you intimately familiar with what that grip feels like. So that when somebody does catch you in that position in the fight, that's your first, what's the word I'm looking for? Trigger warning? Trigger warnings, everybody. That's, that's your first red alert that, uh, you know, you're like half a second away from getting your ACL torn. So that's where you probably might want to start tapping out. Anyway, I've said it three times in this video. I'll say it one more time. When in doubt, tap out to the heel hooks. But don't ignore them. Make them part of your game. Try playing a game of catch and release to build up the positional skills so that later on when you develop the awareness, the bodily awareness of your own personal limits, it's not going to be a big deal. And yeah, thanks for watching. Now get out there and train. 
Hey fella, looks like you could use a rash guard. What for, you say? Well, they protect your skin against matte-born illnesses, matte burn, and they make you look incredibly cool. But where do I get a rash guard from? Hey, have you heard of xmarshall.com? Yeah? Then what are you waiting for? Check them out right now. xmarshall.com has all kinds of rash guards, from sleek and simple, novelty, badass designs, and more. Channel your inner Japanese cartoon rat monster. Express your love for bad puns and kitty cats doing iconic jujitsu moves. Hey, that panda's gonna hit the other panda with a folding chair like a pro wrestler. And this one makes your right arm stand out. Xmarshall.com, serving your needs beyond just no-gi Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Now, find brand new equipment for mixed martial arts, kickboxing, Muay Thai wrestling, and more at xmarshall.com. As always, use my code RAMSEY10 for 10% off everything on the website. Once again, that's xmarshall.com. Rash guards, spats, shorts, and more. Links and discount codes in the description below.